Today I'm with Krista Bauer and we're uh, going to be talking about creating an authentic online presence. So I'm excited to connect with her. Let me just say hi to you first, Krista. Thanks for being here. Hi, George. Thank you. Yeah. So let me just share your bio with uh, the audience and then we'll get into talking about creating an authentic online presence. So uh, Krista Bauer is a passionate creative, a mother of two, and an online presence coach who's been organically growing her business between toddler nap schedules and snack breaks for the past five years. Uh, Krista's particularly lit up when she can help fellow coaches, healers, and spiritually minded entrepreneurs create a warm and real online presence that builds trust, establishes credibility, and attracts kindred hearted clients who love and adore what they do. Uh, if you haven't checked out Krista's website, you should. It's a beautiful website. Um, she is really great with visuals and with copywriting. Um, in fact, I think later this year, Chris, you're going to be teaching a copywriting from the heart kind of course, right? Yeah, actually, hopefully sooner like than later. In the next few weeks, I'd like to run the first beta round. Cool. And then later in the year, you and I, uh, I'm going to be hosting you and teaching a course on sort of do-it-yourself visuals, uh, do-it-yourself graphic design, kind of making sure that whatever, whether you're creating a website or your newsletter or your you know, Facebook event page or whatever it is you're creating, there's a certain sort of best practices for how to, how to think about visual design that any of us can use. And I'm excited for, for that course that's coming up later in the year. But I want to just uh, first have you share with us, um, you know, creating an online presence. Uh, some people think it's a really big deal because you have to have, have everything so polished and professional. And well, if we look at your website, it's very, very nice. Um, but, let's say the, the person who maybe can't spend a whole lot of money right now on graphic design and copywriting and all that stuff. Um, you know, how any guidance for us, does it have to be polished and professional to, to be authentic or, or effective? Right. Right. So actually, yeah. Oh, I'm glad that you mentioned that because it is not about being polished and professional. In fact, I really don't like using the word professional because it reminds me too much of my corporate career where I didn't fit in. So, um, <clears throat> but really the objective, at least what I try to do with my own work and what I try to inspire my clients to do and people who follow me is really to bring more of your heart into your work and allow that to, um, reflect through your words, through your visuals, so that when your ideal clients or when the clients, you know, the people who are a perfect fit for what it is that you do, when they land on your website or when they first, you know, if they find you through Facebook or Instagram, wherever that is, you know, they know that they're in the right place and, and they know that um, you're speaking directly to them and they see themselves in the words and the language that you're using. And so for me, it's really about being personal. It's not so much about being polished or professional, although many of my clients do describe it as they want to be have a more refined or polished online presence, which I can totally relate to as well. But I just wanted to add one thing that you mentioned, George, which was um, you said like a lot of people don't have, you know, the money to spend on branding or copywriting. And that's the thing is that you don't need to invest a lot of money in these things. And if you look at Anything that you see on my website um, has been DIY'd by me. I'm not a designer. Um, I'm not a professional copywriter, but you know, I've learned the basics because like as a business owner, as you know, it doesn't matter um, like whatever modality you, you or like should say, whatever modality you kind of teach to your or, or offer a service that you provide for your clients or like yourself, you're a marketer, but you also, you know, you wear so many hats as an entrepreneur. So it's really important to at least understand the basics so that you can draw in and attract and have the right people gravitate towards you naturally. And I think that's one of the power, uh, the most powerful things about having an online presence that really reflects who you are, that speaks to your work beautifully, that communicates what you do clearly, um, is that, it can do some of the legwork for you. It's like you don't always need to be online posting, although that you know consistent content is obviously an important strategy. But um, you don't always. It can do some of the work for you. And when people find you, they can know, okay, this girl is interesting. I like her vibe. I want to get to know her further. So I think that's one of the things is you don't need to spend a, invest a lot of money. You just need to know some of the basics. 
Yeah. And I'm sure we'll talk about some of the basics now, but mm -hmm. one of the um, things you teach is the four mm -hmm. pillars of an authentic online presence. So I'd love for you to kind yes. of share with us what those four are. Sure. So, so I call it the four pillars of creating or growing um, or, you know, building an, an authentic online presence. And really, this started for myself because I needed a framework, sort of a container to help me kind of like keep my content sort of like focused. And also when I'm working with clients, I want it to have a focus with clients. And then I realized <clears throat> that this could be helpful for clients as well. Like this could be helpful for people to, um, as they're creating their online presence and building up their business, like it could be a helpful, helpful framework. So essentially the four pillars are, so the first one is the most, from, it's the most fundamental uh, pillar, it's the core pillar, and I call it finding your authentic center, which is all about connecting to who you are. And so in an ideal world, when you start your business, we would start with the first pillar and move your way through each of the pillars. But realistically, that's not usually how it works, because typically we start our business, we get our coaching certification, or we, uh, you know, we're trained in a new healing modality, and we're like, okay, we want to get ourselves out there and start working with clients. And what happens is, is a lot of us will, I did this too, will, you know, DIY our website, or we'll put, put up an about page, maybe, maybe a homepage, maybe get someone who can do a website for us on the cheap. And we'll do that. We'll throw it up just to get our name out there and start working with clients. We'll start working with people for free and all of that kind of good stuff. And then, you know, over time we start getting paying clients. What happens is, is then now we are at a place where we are still maybe working for free a little bit more than we want to be. And we want to attract more of the right clients. We have more of a clarity around who it is that we want to work with, who we don't want to work with. And now it's like you want to refine. So I think it's a great way to start is to just jump in and just go for it and do it. I would always recommend that to any person. Um, but my clients tend to now be a couple of years ahead of that. So now they want to go back to stage one. And that's kind of like laying the foundation. So again, I call it finding your authentic center, which is you know, helping you get clarity around your vision and your values and what you stand for, what, what's your perspective, what's the perspective you want to share, why are you doing, you know, why is your business important to you, like, why are you doing it at all? So that's really the first stage is, you know, again, a lot of people I find will, sh will talk about, you know, getting to know your clients and, and understanding your niche, but for me, that's not the first place you start. So the second one, the second pillar is um, all about... <clears throat> And I just want to pause there. I mean, right, I think yeah. what you just said is might be surprising to some people mm -hmm. because people usually think, well, the first thing we do in business or when we're kind of rebranding or, or re kind of launching uh, is to clarify our niche, mm -hmm. our target market, you know, speak to them on all that stuff. But you just said that, Hey, it's, it's really about your story. What's important to you? Why are you doing this? Um, is that right? Am I, did I get that right? Or? Yeah. So, um, this is what I have found for myself personally. Right. So when I started, I had no clue who my niche was. I kind of had an idea. I wanted to like work with, um, healers and things like that, but I wasn't entirely sure. So when I started doing this, I really focused on like, what was I interested in? Like, how did I want to show up online? Like, and so that's kind of where I started. And then through that process, people, resonated with my message. People felt my heart as I shared it online. And so they naturally gravitated towards me. And then through that, I could, it was clear to me then who are the people that are drawn to me, you know? So that's kind of how I identified, um, or I guess got more clarity around who it was that I wanted to be working with. And that's how I recommend doing it. And there's lots of people out there who do teach, you know, target market and, and niching, but it can be really difficult when you haven't worked with anyone. So how do you know, who you're supposed to be working with. How do you know who you don't like working with and all of these things? Like who is your message really for? Yeah. And I find that isn't clear until you've done some work first. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, because when I first started, I thought that my ideal client was somebody who, you know, looked like me, was my age, um, et cetera, et cetera. And, I, and then in the first year, as I, I didn't thankfully say, well, you must look like this or you must be in this age range when my marketing... I just put my service out there based on my own point of view and sort of my personality. And then the people started signing up. They were nothing like me, actually. Right. They were quite different. Uh, they looked different, different age range, uh, different background. And I was quite surprised. So 
um, yeah, I, I, I have that same experience too. So I'm glad you, you mentioned that. But yeah, go ahead and go to, to the second pillar. You yeah, said. so <laughs> the second one I refer to as um, attracting your authentic audience. And I think that this is more around, you know, you have clarity a bit more about who it is that you want to be working with. But this is the stage where you're refining a little bit more. You're refining it a little bit more. So, um, you know, again, a lot of clients have worked now, you know, when, when I work with clients they've, at this stage, they've already worked with people. So, but it, when I look at their website or when I look at the content they're putting out, putting it out, it's not really speaking to that person that they want to be working with, for instance. And I think this is a big mistake that a lot of us make is we tend to either use too much jargon because we have so much expertise and we're so knowledgeable in what it is that we teach, but it falls you know, flat on the people that we're trying to connect with, or um, we're not maybe speaking to directly to what it is that they're going through and, they're, and, they're, and the struggles that they're facing. So this is the refining stage. Um, and then the third pillar is all about, I call it, um, communicating your authentic message. And this is really about uh, not just your, your verbal language, but it's also your visual language. So as you know, George, visuals are very important to me. So it starts with, again, I want to, I, I want to say that my clients at this point, um, you know, they, they, it's not, I don't typically have to help clients figure out what their message is. The message is they usually already have an idea. It's more about refining. So in this stage, we're refining the message. We're making it more clear. We're maybe paring it down and simplifying it. Cause I find a lot of people will include things that are not relevant to what their client is uh, struggling with and maybe what they're offering in their business. Um, and then it's pairing that, pairing your verbal language, the message that you have then with a visual language that can help convey that emotion, that can help convey your message and, and deepen it for people. Like for me, that is a crucial part. And it's not only about conveying the emotion, it's also being able to express yourself and your heart through your business in an artistic way, in a way that feels like beautiful and reflects the work that you do beautifully and the quality and of the work that you provide. You just mentioned visual language. Um, mm -hmm. Can you give us a, maybe an example or two of what you mean by that? Mm -hmm. So I think like when you go to my website, for instance, now I have to warn you, um, I'm going through a refresh myself. So depending yeah. on when you see this video, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a, that's a good example, right? Yeah. Like your own, I mean, we are always evolving. And so our website probably should be evolving on some consistent basis. It doesn't have to be every week or every month or, or even every year necessarily. But, but yeah, so this is, a, this is a good example of you yourself going through that experience of these four pillars. Exactly. And I think that like, so the example that I was going to use for me, it's about, um, you know, if you can go to my website and if you don't read a word that I write on my website, I think that you will be able to sense that I'm a soulful person, uh, you know, that I feel like you know, and I've had people say this to me, like, you know, I can feel your authenticity on the page and I can, you know, like it helps people step into that. And then I always think about, you know, when I'm creating visuals and when I'm creating sort of like my online presence and, you know, again, it goes deeper than just your website, but I'll use the website as an example, you know, thinking about if I had a tangible, tangible space and, you know, my business was, you know, you had to go to, uh, you know, like a brick and mortar style shop or something to work with me. What would, what, what's the energy that I would want people to have? What's the vibe? What's the feeling I would want them to leave with? So I use visuals, color, fonts um, to help, you know, um, translate that, that, that emotion for people and that feeling that I want to create. That's very Was that helpful. clear? Sorry. Yes, definitely. definitely. <laughs> okay. So, um, so the second, so just to recap, we, the first pillar is really about your own uh, authentic story. Yes. Right? Connecting to yourself. Yeah. The second pillar is connecting to the ideal your clients. Yeah. The ideal client. So what's the third pillar then? So the third pillar is the communicating your authentic message. So that's the verbal and visual. The fourth pillar though is all about making an authentic connection so you know you can see there's a theme there um so very quick sidebar like in my past life when i had a long tenure corporate career but one of my last jobs was working in human resources and i was an onboarding specialist so i was hired with someone else to create an onboarding program for our um 
new employees. We didn't have one at the time. And so it's a lot of the same work that I'm doing now at that, you know, it was about making people who were hired, who accepted our offers, started the company um, and feel welcome and warm and making that connection with them to help also reaffirm their decision to want to work with us. Cause there's nothing worse than having a new employee start. There's no one there to welcome them. They got nothing on their desk. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. It's like the worst feeling in the world. So I have, in a sense, when I look back, I've, brought that now into my business online. And a lot of that work is the same. And so the making authentic connections, again, is like connecting people through your content. It's getting yourself out there. It's like those touch points that you have with people, you know, it could be when they start um, working with you, making them feel welcome, like having a, a nice onboarding process so that they feel taken care of. It could be the content that you put out, like every sort of touch point that you have is really important to me. Yeah, so it is about relationship building it and is, being yes. aware that uh, whether it's an email that they receive from you or Absolutely. whether it's um, how you are connecting with them on a meeting, all that is a relationship building. And just to be aware of that, that, that is, there's a thread there. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So um, maybe you could share with us uh, when, you, when you work with clients on this kind of stuff, um, you know, what stage should they be at? And you mentioned before, okay, maybe they're not, but, but you can work with clients who are more, or maybe not, maybe you can explain. Do you work with clients uh, in the beginning of their business or once they've already done some work, maybe they've already got some clients and now they're wanting to relaunch, rebrand. So yeah, share with us a bit about that. Yes, I, I can work with clients and I do work with people who are just in the beginning stages of their business, but I don't like to start from scratch, meaning you need to have some copy written. You've got to have some idea about who it is that you're talking to or who, what it is you're talking about and who it is that you're talking to. Um, you've got to have you know, a website there or something. Uh, I don't like to start from scratch and I don't have to have to catch everyone up, you know, get everyone up to speed, sort of, so to speak. So as long as you have like, some of the basics, then we can work from there. Most of my clients, however, tend to be already in business for at least a couple of years. And they've got, like I said, they started their business, right? And they were, you know, passionate and excited. They've got their new coaching certification or their new modality, whatever that they're, that they're going to be offering their clients. And they've, put up a website fairly quickly and it now no longer reflects who they are or there it's a jumbled mess and it's cluttered and it doesn't speak directly to their clients. And so now they need some help refining it and making it speak more, um, exactly what you said, George, talking about the evolution, we evolve, we're no longer at that stage anymore. So we need everything to kind of catch up to where we are now. So that's sort of where people tend to be when they work with me. And how does somebody know when it's time to do that refresh? So how do they know when their online presence, maybe they just go to the site and they can't bear to look at it. <laughs> That's one, <laughs> one way of doing it. But, uh, but yeah, any, any other signs that, that it's time to kind of refresh that? Yeah. I mean, exactly. Like you said, the obvious, right? Like you not feeling it anymore. You just know it's not right. Um, like I said, like for myself, the reason that if you go to my website, it's, it's out of date is because last year I was working as a virtual assistant. Um, and I switched over to what I'm doing now. I was always doing it when I was a VA, but now I'm doing it more full time, not working as a VA anymore. So I made that switch at the beginning of the year and because of COVID and everything else, I haven't had the opportunity to go in and update it. So there's that you make, an, you, you switch, like you're changing your services and your offerings have evolved. Um, the other, the other, um, sign is just, you know, you're not attracting the right people. So maybe people are still wanting to work with for free all the time. Maybe people that are getting on discovery calls with you, they're not your people. Like you're like, I don't want to work with this person or they're just not the right fit. Um, the other thing is, is that maybe I hear this all the time too, is that my website isn't doing anything for me or, you know, people I'm, I'm putting up content. No one's engaging. I mean, there's nothing worse. So if that's happening, then, you know, it's like, okay, well, what's going on here then it could be something in the way that you're writing. It's not connecting to people or there's a disconnect. You can go to someone's website. You might see them. This happens to me all the time. I'll engage with someone in a Facebook group. And I'll, they'll say something that's really intriguing. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I want to check this person out. I'll click over to their Facebook profile, find their website. And then I go to their website and it's like, no, it doesn't speak to me. I, I don't connect with it. It's like, 
you know, a jumbled mess or it's cluttered. It's, it, it doesn't have any content or whatever. So um, I think that that's the big thing is you're not really getting the right clients or you're not getting, um, you know, anyone engaging with anything that you put out there. You know, there's other factors as well, obviously, that go with that. But that's one thing. That's one way to know. Yeah, that's really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. So um, just want to make sure people know how to reach you and kind of what to look for as you are you're putting out these new offerings. Uh, your website is kristabauer.com, you know, your, your name. So K-R-I-S-T-A-B-A-U-E-R.com. Yes. And you're going to be, maybe mention again, the classes that you are going to be teaching coming up, the online classes. Um, yeah, tell us about those. So I have a new class coming out. Um, this is, um, it's called Copywriting with Heart. And this is going to be, I'm hoping it's the beta class is going to run in a few weeks here. So if you're interested, George is going to leave a link below. You can get your name on the wait list so that there's going to be 10 spots opening up. I'm going to follow your lead, George, and kind of do something similar to what you're doing with your beta classes. Um, so if you want to get on the beta class for that, um, it's be like the raw gritty sort of version. Um, you can certainly do that. It'll be free. And then I hope to release the more polished and refined version um, mid July kind of thing. And so, yeah, you, you, you know, if you're interested, if that sounds like something that, you know, you're kind of wanting to learn more about learning how to write in a way that speaks more to your ideal clients, that resonates more, share more of your heart, share more, uh, you know, in a personal way, then that's what I, that's what I'm going to be teaching in the class. Cool. Great. Yeah. yeah. And then you and I are going to be doing the class on visual uh, branding, sort of do it yourself, visual thinking yes. uh, coming up later this year. So I'm excited about that. Um, how else should clients reach out to you? Like, do you, you, you provide one-to-one -one services in terms of their branding, their copywriting? Tell us a bit about that. So I work with, so I do coaching as well with clients um, and, you know, traditional coaching. And then I also work a lot of, I do a lot of writing for clients, but I am hoping by the end of this year, to be phasing that out and focusing more on teaching, but you know, you could still reach out to me. I do copy audits for clients. So I will take, and it's not just copy audits, I call, like an, a whole online presence. So I'll look at your website. I'll look at the copy on your website. I will give you a video report of, you know, my findings and areas that I, I see that maybe gaps and things that are missing. Um, I'll look at it through the perspective of your ideal client and also the perspective of someone with, you know, sort of like a background in doing this. So, you know, that's kind of how I share with clients. And then from there, a lot of times clients will hire me to write copy, their copy for them. Um, but the reason for the course is because I, I would much rather teach someone what I do so that they can do it for themselves. And, you know, I think that's the most authentic way to, you know, share your message is when it's written from your own heart. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. And Krista, thank you so much for your work. Um, those, who are, those of you watching who are interested, definitely go check out Krista's website, see what's available. Uh, you might decide to work with her or take uh, some of her classes. So thanks, Krista. And um, thank you. yeah, thank you for your work. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, George. Thanks.